Welcome and thank you all for standing by for today's conference. All participant lines have been placed in listen-only mode until the question and answer session. To ask a question via your phone line, please press star 1 and state your name when prompted. Today's conference is being recorded. If you have any objections, please disconnect at this time. And now I'd like to turn today's conference over to Kim Davis. Thank you. You may begin. Thank you. Good day, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for another Census Academy webinar. Today's presentation is Veterans in Our Community. We are recording today's webinar. It will be available within the next couple of weeks on Census Academy. Our presenter today is Mr. Ron Williams. He is a data dissemination specialist with the Census Bureau. One of Mr. Williams' key responsibilities is to assist individuals and organizations with extraction of data from the U.S. Census Bureau. Mr. Williams has an extensive background in education, data analysis, and public speaking. He has worked in public, private, and government sectors Mr. Williams became a professional educator in 1992 and has been actively engaged in education ever since. In those capacities, he has taught secondary students, post-secondary students, adult education, private corporations, government agencies, and non-profit organizations. We will be offering the opportunity for attendees to ask the presenter questions that are relevant to today's topic at the end of the session via opening the phone lines per the operator's queue. Note that we have a number of participants today, so we may not get to all the questions. We will provide contact details at the end for follow-up on the questions we do not answer. We also will be operating the chat feature. You can locate that in the middle, lower portion of your screen. If you send messages in the chat, be sure to select all panelists from the drop-down menu, and be mindful not to enter sensitive information into the chat. This includes any personally identifiable information, business identifiable information, or any other sensitive information. Questions here may also be entered during a follow-up email after the presentation today. We will be asking that you complete an evaluation at the end of today's presentation that will help and assist us with future presentations on Census Academy. And now I'd like to welcome our presenter today, Mr. Ron Williams. Thank you, Kim. I truly appreciate that wonderful introduction. I'm a veteran, and I am very, very impressed with how much quality information the Census Bureau has on this topic. The focus of this webinar is to provide a very quick introduction to some of the data, and especially ways to access and visualize that information. We will be moving through the presentation fairly quickly. When we get to the live demonstration, please remember the webinar is being recorded so that you can pay more attention to the type of data available and how to access it. This is not a webinar just to provide you with numbers and data. It's designed to demonstrate that veteran information is freely available to you. We will also see there are visualizations of that data already created for you. Our objectives are on the slide. What it doesn't say is that we'll be going very fast in order to complete everything in the time frame provided, so let's get started. This is what we will cover. Please take a moment to look it over. My goal, as I said, is to provide you an introduction to the information that's available and how to access the data. During the demo, the focus will be on system capabilities and not the details. Please take a moment to look this over.
The U.S. Census Bureau collects an enormous amount of information every year, not just every 10 years. The U.S. Census Bureau actually conducts over 130 surveys each year. The VA is a user of census data. Some of their uses of census data are listed here. Here are some of the sources of veteran statistics available from the U.S. Census Bureau. The U.S. Census Bureau does not, does not have the following available. Homelessness, VA benefits other than service-connected disability, health status of veterans, information on a specific veteran, such as location of internment or details about any individual. Right now, we're going through the decennial census, the 2020 census. While preparing for today, I ran across something interesting in addition to what's on the screen there. In the second bullet, I do not know why veteran status was not asked in the first decennial census immediately after World War I. Just thought that was interesting, wanted to share it, but there's some additional information on the screen that may be of interest to you. I mentioned the decennial census. Ever since 1790, the data collected from the decennial census have been the official figures used every 10 years to compute the number of congressional representatives allowed for each state. The method of collecting the data have changed in the last 200 plus years. So if you look in the upper right is an 1854 painting by Francis William Edmonds titled Taking the Census showing a person collecting census data. We still have that today, where we occasionally send individuals to homes to ask questions. In response to concerns that decennial census data took too long to release and were quickly out of date, the Census Bureau began the development phase of the American Community Survey in 1996 you'll see American Community Survey abbreviated with uh, ACS uh, off and on throughout this presentation. The full implementation stage of the American Community Survey began in January 2005. Again, with an annual housing unit sample of approximately 3 million addresses throughout the U.S. and 36,000 addresses in Puerto Rico. In 2010, with the ACS fully implemented, the decennial census was administered using only a short form of 10 questions in the 50 states and Washington, D.C. In addition to counting the population in the 50 states and Washington, D.C., the U.S. Census Bureau all also conducts census in U.S. territories, or what we will commonly call the island area. These include U.S. Virgin Islands, Commonwealth of Northern Mariana Islands, American Samoa, and Guam. The American Community Survey is quite different from the decennial survey. This slide should give you an idea of some of the key differences. Since the American Community Survey does not go to every household every year, it provides estimates, whereas the decennial goes to every household and provides an official count. I'll give you a moment to look that over. ACS data are very timely because they are released in the year immediately following that in which they are collected. Over the course of the year, ACS samples roughly 3.5 million addresses, or about one in every 38 households. One important factor or fact to remember about the American Community Survey is that the forms are not mailed to specific people but rather to specific addresses. The sample is designed to ensure good geographic coverage and does not target individuals. Over a five-year period, the ACS will sample about 15 million addresses. As the largest survey in the country, it is the only source of small area data on a wide range of important social economic characteristics for all communities in the countries. Ultimately, 
the ACS produces over 11 billion estimates for over 35,000 communities. And these estimates are used to allocate over $675 billion in federal funds. I'll cover a little more about communities and geographies in a few minutes. Let's move ahead. This gives an idea of how much information is collected through the American Community Survey. No need to try to memorize the slide. Instead, just note it collects a tremendous amount of information over numerous topics. That's a lot of information, isn't it? In the earliest years of the American Community Survey, the questions about veterans were the same as the decennial. The objective of including a question on service-connected disability ratings was to enable the VA to cross-classify information on this topic by other characteristics, such as income, to guide them in establishing the demand for healthcare services. According to VA.gov, there are more than 2,000 healthcare, counseling, benefits, and cemetery locations across the nation. Our data plays, plays a part in determining where and what type of service is best suited for those locations. These are the actual questions from the American Community Survey. Hope you have time to glance, glance at those and read them over. The VA has other uses for census data. There's some of the other uses. Data on veterans also benefits the community in a variety of ways. As previously mentioned, according to the VA, there are more than 2,000 healthcare counseling benefits and cemetery locations. Those are in your communities. With the American Community Survey, it creates the vast amount of data I mentioned. Well, this is a list of tables from the American Community Survey that pertain to veteran population. No need to memorize each available table. Merely the note, there are numerous data tables with veteran information. This presentation is being recorded, so you'll be able to go back and, re and re reference this if you need. The columns tell you if the tables are included in the one-year American Community Survey, which does not include all geographies, or the five-year American Community Survey, which does include all geographies. Basically, if a geography has less than 65,000 people, data are available for five-year periods. If the geography has an estimated population greater than 65,000 people, then one-year estimates are available. And that's very, very important to realize that 65,000 cutoff. I've mentioned geography a few times. This is a vastly, vastly simplified visualization of census geographies. Know that there are over 13,000 geographies for one-year estimates. Remember, that's going to be your population, 65,000 or more. And 776,000 geographies for the five-year estimate. This image shows some of the geographies for which ACS data are produced and the relationship between them. Lower geographic areas fit or, or nest neatly within the larger areas. And those are dir uh, directly connected with the lines. For example, school, congressional, state legislative districts fit neatly within states and do not cross state boundaries. However, they may cross boundaries of counties or metropolitan areas. The ACS's unique ability to report on a wide range of geography is what gives it such broad appeal. The previous slide showed, as I mentioned, a very simplified image of geographies. 
Not everyone is familiar with uh, census geographies below the county level. Basically, blocks are very small geographic areas that combine together to make a block group, as seen at the bottom right of uh, seen at the bottom of the previous slide. Block groups come together to form a tract, and tracts nest or fit within a county. I only mention this because it plays uh, because geography plays such an extremely important role when discussing census data. Let's shift from geography to ways the data with uh, about the data within those locations. This is a abbreviated sample of census data tools which has veteran data. There are actually more than 50, more than 50 data tools available to view data. Not all of those contain veteran information. I only mention that to emphasize the Census Bureau has a broad way, uh, a broad variety of ways to access the data that's collected. We're only focusing on veterans, and so these are the tools that we'll discuss. External resources are available. Other agencies also have veteran data. I won't discuss what's available from each of those organizations. I'll only mention they also have data. And that data is free of charge to obtain as well. When we look at data, it's fun to look at data in this format. And it's exciting and it's wonderful. However, that is not always the best way to convey information to others. One way to do that is to use visualizations. This will help your data come alive. The Census Bureau provides multiple data visualizations already created for you. In our demonstration, we will actually see that you can make your own custom visualizations. So let's move over to a live demonstration. I need to change screens here, so give me just a moment, please. This, um, give me, <laughs> I clicked on the wrong thing. Hold on just a second. You gotta love that. Live demonstrations are always fun. All right, this is the U.S. Census Bureau's homepage. You'll notice that it's laid out actually in a very organized pattern. And what you will see is, as you can tell, there's images, there's articles, there's uh, timely things that you can click on. On the upper right, here's a population clock. It has visualizations created with it. What's a completely different uh, webinar, but as we go down the page, I just want to give you an idea of how much information is just available when you open the home page. And as I mentioned, this is census.gov, which is the census homepage. So let's go back up. One thing I want to mention, and it's, uh, I mentioned about how impressed I am with Census Bureau data. One of the best ways to get started, in case you're not familiar, is to use the search bar that's located at the very top. If we begin to type in veteran, and as you hit about the third letter, you'll notice suggestions start to pop up. You may be interested in any of the things that are listed there. And you notice it at the bottom, it gets into geography, but we're interested in veteran information. I'll go ahead and type this out. And notice we type in the whole thing. Nothing changed because it already made the assumptions of where we were going. So let's click on our suggestions and click on veteran. As you can tell, it's taken a minute to get there. Like a lot of you, I am working from home right now, so I'm one of my five. So Please bear with me. We all are having fun working new ways of working. 
But all I did was I typed in the word veteran. On the suggestions, I clicked the first thing, and immediately I have a box that tells me there are 18,611, 432 veterans in the United States. So you have over 14, or excuse me, you have over 18 million veterans in the United States. And then if we continue to look at this, you'll see there's our source, came from the American Community Survey, five-year estimate. You have an explanation, but notice on the bottom right, you can click on this and there's a chart that has already been created for you. And this chart is showing by state how many veterans there are. You can see California with over 1.6 million. But as we scroll down, states are in alphabetical order, but if you just watch the bars, you can quickly see states with a lot of veterans and few veterans. So it's a wonderful tool, and it's already created for us. So there's nothing you have to do to create that. That's you know, one of those things I mentioned. We also have a table. If I click on the table, you can get this in a table format, which some individuals, this is, you know, this may be the visualization they need, or they may need something like on the previous example. Once again, alphabetical order organized extremely well. You'll notice now that was just the first thing. If we look, we have search results. And as we begin to look at the search results, you can see the topics that are listed there and you may see something that's of interest to you. This veteran employment outcomes, I'll mention more about that later because there's some interesting things coming up on it. But let's go back and we'll focus on this first one that says veterans. I'll just click on veterans because it's just a link for us. It takes us to a page about veterans. And as I scroll down this page, notice there are visualizations that are available, news articles, publications, once again, it, you'll see visualizations here, and there should be other things that may, you may be interested in. I'll point this out several times, but all we did was type in the word veterans, and it took us to this. But here's something that's interesting. If we clicked on state veteran statistics, you'll notice that it has an example here with Alabama, but notice the drop down. If we click on the drop down and choose another state, let's say Arizona, and I click on Arizona and I download this file, it's going to download a PDF file of information specific to Arizona. There you have a graphic of the state. You'll see that there's populations, comparisons to the United States, and that's, we're not gonna worry about all the details, but I just wanna point out, as I mentioned earlier, capabilities. So you can create, if you're interested in a particular state or a comparison of states, you can easily not even have to create the visualization. You just go and access it and tell you what you want. And notice I mentioned this is a PDF document. So this can be easily shared or printed or whatever fits your needs. But I will point out something interesting on the map. I mentioned how the, the VA uses our data. Underneath the map of Arizona, you'll see it says one dot equals 200 veterans. And a red dot is a location of a veteran health facility. You notice in the center of the state where you have a lot of veterans, you have a lot of facilities. In the bottom right, you have a lot of veterans. And in the upper right, you'll notice an area that seems kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Well, there's, there's tribal areas and that, uh, that portion of the state. And I cannot speak for the VA, but it lends me to believe that the VA is putting facilities also in areas that might be a great distance from others. And you can see it's a long distance away. And so if not having any facilities in the northeast portion of the state, the VA put one up there, even though there's few veterans. Very interesting, very easy to, to use. And remember, we got to this by typing in a single thing, and that's the word veteran. Let's go back to the census homepage, and here's an interesting thing to point out. When you're new using census data and exploring the Census Bureau's website, in the upper left is the Census Bureau logo. If you click on the logo, it will take you back to census.gov. 
didn't have to retype a URL or anything. Now, we're going to focus on data. So let's go directly to a way to obtain data very quickly. In this blue bar going across the top, you'll notice it says browse by topic, explore data, library, it has various things. You just have to hover over. But let's go to our explore data and we will click on explore data main. I will point something out because it's a question that comes up frequently. Everything on the Census Bureau's website is a single click. I will click Explore Data Main. If you accidentally click twice, so double click, you might skip a page ahead. So I just want to point that out that everything is a single click. We, we hovered over Explore Data. We've not typed anything in. Clicked on Explore Data Main and it took us to this page. We have uh, data.census.gov, which is our main, uh, yes, you could say powerhouse or main tool now for extracting census data. If you've been around for a while, you've probably heard of American Fact Finder. American Fact Finder has been retired, uh, for lack of a better word, but now we're using data.census.gov. As we scroll down, notice that there are data tools that are mentioned. visualizations. These are already created for you. Now we're looking at the entire data, not just veterans at this point. Data gems, which are available through Census Academy. We'll mention that a little bit later, but the Census Academy is an amazing, amazing tool that's now freely available to the public. And you can see there are other items that are available as we scroll down. So let's go back up to the top. As I mentioned in our opening slides, we're going to focus on capabilities and not so much on details. So we're going to shift over to what we're looking at now. We're going to look, uh, we're not just looking for those specific numbers in a topic. We're just demonstrating places to go for information. One of those is called Quick Facts. Remember? Home page, explore data, explore data main, and quick facts is already here for us, loaded for us. We merely click on go to quick facts. And you'll notice the default is going to be the United States. Most everything that you go to in the Census Bureau's uh, website when you're initially obtaining data, the default will be the United States unless you tell it a different geography that you want to go to. So, Let's not just look at the United States. Let's pick another state. Let's type in, say, Ohio. And as I begin to type in Ohio, it starts giving me options. And you can complete, you can finish typing out whatever you're looking for, or you can just click on the option that was presented. And you'll now notice we have data for Ohio that's on this table. Well, as I scroll down, you can see that there's population estimates and there's a lot of information that's here. I'm not going to re, uh, read everything that's on here. I'm just going to tell you there are, there are over 60 topics available only by typing in the word Ohio. If you are using this, and like I mentioned, we're looking at capabilities. If you're ever using this and you have geographies that you no longer need, there's a blue X. Just click the blue X one time and it updates. So we removed the United States as an option. We're just looking at Ohio. And what's interesting is as we scroll down under population characteristics, you'll see it says veterans. I'll click on veterans and we'll see that it moved us to the top and it's in blue. That's important because whatever in blue is the information we're going to see as we go to the next tabs. But you'll, you'll notice it's estimated there are 729,649 veterans that are in Ohio. I'll point out this estimate because this came from the American Community Survey. So, I mentioned other visuals. Here's what's interesting. If we think about it, we are currently looking at a table. But if I click on map, I will have a color-coded map of all of the states Ohio is highlighted in red, but here is a color-coded map already created for you showing data for the five years from 2014 to 2018 from the American Community Survey. And this data 
is concerning veterans. Visualization was already created, so we didn't have to do anything. But what if we want a visualization involving a chart? We simply click on chart, and there's your chart. Whatever geography that you're interested in, we're looking at Ohio, that geography is going to be at the top of the chart, and then all the other geographies will be listed in alphabetic quarter below it. What if we want to see more? If we click on Dashboard, notice what we see is you'll have a table, a map, and a chart, all in the same place at the same time. Now, I'm not going to change the optimization on my screen at this time, but you can easily optimize this to fit your screen or to move it however you need. But there's one more point that's on here, and it's commonly overlooked is the last one. If we click More, you'll see that you can print. You can download this as a CSV. You can email it, embed it. There's lots of ways you can use this information. So I'm only pointing out that this was created for you, and there's a lot of ways you can use every visualization we're going to go through today. But let's go back. You can use the back arrows, but I'm going to go back to census.gov, and the only reason I'm doing this is for continuity and repetition so that I don't lose somebody by clicking back, back, back. Let's, let's just go back to the home page. So we're going to go back into looking at our data, explore data, explore data main, Let's go to this data.census.gov. I mentioned that it's an amazing tool for research. We can scroll down the screen. Once again, see there's lots of information available. Maps, visualizations are there. Profiles are too much for us to get into for a one-hour uh, session, which I said we will go through quickly, which we're already over halfway. So I'm going to pick up the pace a little. This area, this box, is commonly called a simple search. So like the search that we saw on the, at the beginning of the Census Bureau's homepage, if we begin to type in veterans in this point, notice that it gives us anything that has a VET in it to include all of its city, Missouri, but we also have veterans. So I'm going to click on veterans. Notice it says 7.1% of the U.S. population are veterans. Earlier when we did this, we saw it gave us a raw number, the 18 million number. So already you're seeing two different ways that, th that data might be presented to you, either as a number or as a percentage. We typed in veteran. Notice there's a data table already present. Various data tables are there. Maps are available, pages. There's, all of this is created for you. If we click on this data table, here's the data table. As we mentioned, it's for the United States because that's our default unless we tell it a different geography. This data table has, you'll see it's entitled Veteran Status. That's the title came to the American Computer Survey, and then this is the table ID, S is in Sierra, 2101. You may not always need to memorize the table ID, but if you find yourself going back to a table frequently, then you'll be able to get to that table quickly by typing it in. But let's get back to the data that's on here. We have our period of service, you have your gender, and I'm not going to read all these to you, but I just want you to see how much data is available on this one data table. And all we did was select veterans. And you'll notice that this first column is the estimated U.S. population. We'll see that that population, uh, the reason that it's X out there is because you're not looking at percent. Now you're looking at percent male, female. And as we go across, there's your veterans, 7.1%, a margin of error. Since everything is an estimate, you're always going to have a margin of error. Getting into the details of that, that's completely different. Once again, that's a completely different thing. So I mentioned that we only typed in one word. 
Well, let's, we're going to go back. We're going to do a search in a different way. Now, this is something that's interesting about data.census.gov. If we click on the logo that's, that's at this point, it will take us back to data.census.gov. It's about the only place you're going to find that in the Census Bureau that if you click on the logo, it does not take you back to the home page. I just want to make sure you understand there's a differentiation in there. Here's something that I love. If we go to the advanced search, notice it's uh, underneath. So what we will do, we're going to look at veteran information for a specific geography. I'll use Colorado. We will not type anything in. Basically, we're going to answer a series of questions. So I mentioned we're going to look at veteran information for the state of Colorado. So let's go to our geography, and we need to tell it what geography we're looking for. Well, we're looking for a state. If you remember back on the slides, I showed you the simplified uh, geographies, nation, region, state, county, track. That was right in the center uh, vertical on that slide. So if we click state, it's going to ask us what state do we want to look at. I'll check the box beside Colorado. And there is a filter box at the bottom. You'll notice Colorado shows up in here. Uh, not to, uh, I guess, advertise any organization, but if you shop online, such as uh, Target, Amazon, Walmart, any of those things, when you select an item, it puts it in your shopping cart. Think of this as the shopping cart. We've selected Colorado. The next thing we want to look at is I mentioned veterans in Colorado. So if we go to topics and we click on topics and we go to our populations and people because none of the rest of these really fit for veterans, so populations and people, and you'll notice veterans is listed. When I click on veterans, notice it shows up in my filter box. So I have what I'm interested in and I'm going to click search. I'm going to mention it again. We have not typed anything in. First thing is a box that says Veterans Colorado. You can click on that. Here's the, that table we looked at a minute ago, veteran status, but let's look at a different table. Let's look at this second one. It says sex by age by veteran status, and you'll notice there's others there, but let's just go with this one. This data is only going to be for Colorado, and you'll notice you have your estimate, your margin of error again, and as we scroll down, point out, uh, let me point out that you have the sex of the veterans, the different age groups. You notice we're looking at male, now we're looking at female. So it's a very, very brief data table, but it contains a lot of information. So what am I going to do with it now that I'm at this point? Well, this is optimized for Google Chrome. If you're using Google Chrome, Oh, if you're on a uh, Microsoft product, you merely click Control P. If you're on a uh, uh, using an iOS and Apple product, you would want to do Command P. But I'll press Control P. Now I have the option to print that table, or I can save that table as a PDF. This is what it would look like if I download it as a PDF. As we scroll down you'll notice that was all the information that, that was on the data table. So this is what it looks like if, you, if you're looking at the PDF. What if we want to print it? You merely look on the left-hand side where it says Change. You click on Change, and then you change it to whatever printer you want, and then you have options to change the layout, a lot of different things available. But once again, it's going to give you a print preview of what it would look like on the page. And there's your print preview. Very simple. From the data table in Google Chrome, we merely press Control P. What if that doesn't fit our needs? What if I only want part of the table? Highlight a cell, and it's just like Excel. If you left click and hold down, you can highlight the cells that you want, and then right click. You can copy those cells, paste them into, a, into an existing, power, uh, existing Excel document. 
you can copy this, you can export it uh, as a CSV so you can download it, export it to Excel. Amazing capabilities of this that's already been done for you. All you have to do is highlight it and copy it or control P or I'll also show you a little while that you can download this data. So you've already seen some of the capabilities. Let's move a little further. If I press Customize Table, and we're looking at Colorado, and I know that I'm eventually going to look at uh, counties within Colorado. Some of the counties may have less than 65,000 veterans. So what I want to make sure I do is I change this from one year to five years because I know some of the areas later on are going to be less than 65,000. Did you notice the table automatically updated from one-year data to five-year data? In case you missed it, you go back to our one year. Pay attention to the total number of residents, uh, or excuse me, the total number of veterans that we see, second, second line. That's one year, 371,000. Five-year estimates, you'll notice that it's updated 375,000. So that becomes very important because as you move further along, you need to keep that point of reference. So we have data notes, selections, geography. You see lots of options to go across here. If you click download, it gives you the option to download this, and you can choose the years. And you notice CSV is the only option. But let's go to our map because we want to look at some of our capabilities. We have a map of, of Colorado, and isn't it boring? There's nothing to compare it to. So let's, let's bring out something to make this a little more interesting and visually uh, appealing to us. I'm going to click Clear Geographies, Clear Geos. I want you to see how easy this is. We're, if, if you think about it, we have not typed anything in since we started the advanced search. We're merely answering questions. So let's clear those geographies. Under um, the, if we go to customize map, we're going to customize this map. Let's change this from state to county. We'll click county. You'll notice in gray, we now see a depiction of every county in Colorado. Now, I'll go ahead and point this out. I want to be candid with you. The reason I chose Colorado, it fits on the screen really well. So whenever you're doing a demonstration like this, so don't think I favor Colorado or somewhere else. I just want you to know that's the only reason I selected it, is it fits on our, our screen very well. We've cleared our geographies. We need to tell it what geography are we looking for. And you have a couple of ways to add on this map. You can click on a specific county and click Select. And I want to look at every county in the state. And that will get really old clicking on each county. So let's, let's look at a better way to do that. You have an option on here that says select, and this will allow you to draw a box. So you can just drop a point. As we come down, we have now highlighted every county in Colorado. Notice that it's now color-coded because we're looking at total population. But I want to look at my veterans. So if I click where it says data available instead of total estimate, let's look at our total veterans. So now I'm going to look at veteran population in Colorado. You notice a couple of the counties change colors. What if those colors are not what I want? Because they're not depicting the, the data on the veterans. Well, if we look on the left-hand side, we have something that looks like a gear. If I click that gear one time, I can change the color palette simply by clicking a drop down. If you want something really vivid, you can go here. Or what if you want something a little more subdued, you simply click there. Okay. And I know we're short on time, but let's go ahead and I'll show you a little bit more on the capabilities. If we zoom in to El Paso County, I'm going to now change this. Let me clear my geographies out. I'm going to look at El Paso County. Remember that simplified version of the uh, geographies we had on the slides? It looks like a tree. 
If I change this to track, which is a smaller geography, you have to scroll down. Since it's tracked, we will now see every track that nests or fits neatly within that county. And once again, I can highlight this and select several at the same time. I'm looking at my total number of veterans, and there is our total number of veterans. If you want to share this, you can click on this URL, just right click on it, and you can copy and paste that into something. So that's another capability on how, how you can use this. I'm going to go back to the census homepage. So much of this information is available to us and it's already been created. I just can't emphasize that enough. I'm going back to the census homepage. Let's look at one more tool. I know we're really short on time, but let's look at one more tool. If I go to Explore Data, Explore Data Main, we have a data tool that's called Census Business Builder. Now, we're not going to go into all the capabilities of it, but we'll very quickly point it out. If I scroll down and go to Census Business Builder, and then click Go to CBB, which is Census Business Builder, we can go to our regional analyst, and once again, we'll see color-coded maps. The default is going to be uh, the default is going to be population. But let's go back to Ohio. I'll type in Ohio. You'll notice all the Ohio's show up. Here is Ohio. As I mentioned, the default is population. Here's Ohio's population compared to the states that are on the screen. But if we go to this drop down, it says select map variable, and I go to my socioeconomic characteristics. I can scroll down, and if we get down close to the bottom, you'll see it says percent veterans. And if I apply that variable, watch what happens. Now you have a map showing the percent of veterans in all of, all of the states immediately around Ohio. And you notice that you can go to the counties, and I won't go into all those details, but there's a lot of information that's further available. Return to my census.gov. And let's look at one last thing before we go back to our slides, and this is the Census Academy. The Census Academy, Explore Data Census Academy, is a great place to go to learn more. Within Census Academy, you'll notice that there's information already created, there's data gems. The data gems are typically one to three minute long videos that teach you how to do something very, very specific or something that you may notice that's important to you. And on the right-hand side, you'll notice there are several data gems that are available. You can subscribe, which I highly recommend, which will send you information whenever it's updated. But this is the reason I took us back to here. On the webinars, you'll notice it has upcoming and recorded. So we mentioned this will be recorded, and uh, they'll tell you more about that at the end. But if I click on upcoming webinars, I mentioned one earlier about it said VEO. If we scroll down, here's today's. If we scroll down to May 20th, notice that here's the test statistics on Army veterans transitioning into civilian labor markets. That sounds like a, uh, a webinar that, that is of interest to me, and I hope to, to go there. So all you have to do is click on it, and it will give you the instructions to get to that. So let's go back to our slides. Instead of going through everything, let's just do this unprofessional way, but the quick way. So we're back on our slides. I just mentioned Census Academy. We showed you how to navigate there. Here's a URL for it. You can see on this that you, I mentioned subscribe, different things, but here's what, what I really want to point out is that there's a couple of things you can do. You can request free data training. So if I happen to mention something today that you're interested in, you can go to uh, Census Academy and you can request training, additional training on that information. Also, you can go to census dot ask data at census.gov and send them an email with a specific question 
or you can request the training. You can also call in to Ask Data, the 844 Ask Data, and that's a great way to communicate with our division. There's other ways you can stay connected. This is my contact information. I know we don't always put that out, but I want you to know that you're welcome to contact me. Um, I will get back to you as quickly as possible, but there's our contact information. So, Deb, Kim, I know we're really short on time, but let's go ahead and open this up for a few questions. Also, Sarah, if you have anything, just let me know. Thank you, sir. At this time, if you would like to ask a question, please unmute your phone, press star 1, and state your name when prompted. And, sir, we do have questions in the audio queue at this time, if you'd like to start with those. Sarah, that would be fine. Thank you. Limoy, Loy, your line is open. Mr. Loy, your line is now open. Sarah, can we move to the next one since we only have a few minutes? Getting no response? Certainly. Next question. Robert, your line is open. Uh, greetings. Uh, good morning. I noticed, good morning. I noticed two different numbers of veterans for the District of Columbia. One in the original, in the chart that you use listed uh, veterans in the district uh, 26,938, but on the PDF form that uh, is used is listed at 30,520. Yes, sir. That's going to be caused by either looking at one-year estimates or five-year estimates. The one-year okay. estimates, as I mentioned, are uh, populations with 65,000 or more. So that's why you're going to see that variation is because the number of households sampled in one year is less than the number of households sampled in five years. So that would cause the change in your margin of error, which is going to cause the change in that number that you're seeing. But it's merely so the which one would be, Which would be more appropriate to use? It really depends on how you're wanting to use it. Um, for a presentation like uh, one that I'll be giving in the future, um, in that presentation we're going to be specifically talking about a single geography, and we're going to be talking about that geography as it has changed over time. So we will go back and we will use various um, years, but when we get to the part where I'm going to talk about smaller populations, that five year becomes extremely important. But the one year is going to be a, an estimate that is the most current. So how would you list, how is the, the District of Columbia determined as a small or large? Uh, well, District of Columbia, Robert, District of Columbia has a population greater than 65,000 individuals. So that's going to be, you'll be able to find one year data. If you dive down into the geographies and get to the tract level, you're not going to have a tract greater than 65,000. Uh, one of the slides earlier that showed the tracts are uh, typically around 4,000. Let me go back to that slide so I can put that on the screen. Robert, I, I am going to have to be pretty quick because we do have others yeah. waiting, but you can see when we get to the tract level, the optimum is 4,000. D.C., you have some highly dense populations, so you're going to have some tracks that are greater than 4,000, nothing near 65. So if you're going to be talking about tracks, I would highly recommend using five-year. Robert, does that okay. help? Yeah, okay. thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sarah? Next question. Zyra, your line is open. Hello. How are you all? Um, my question was, how often is this information updated? And after that period, is it used for anything other than sensor-related material? Okay. Um, the data is updated at least yearly. The data will be released 
throughout the year. Now, there's, there's too many data releases to get into, but American Community Survey data, uh, there are updates that are released throughout the year. So, yes, uh, at least once a year you're going to see an update to the data. And then uh, I didn't catch the other part of your question. There was something about down the years or further years. No, that was it. You okay, thank you. Okay, thank well, thank you. you. I'm showing no further sure. questions from the phone line, sir. Oh, great. Thank you. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming today. I, I truly appreciate for attending the webinar. Let me hand this back over so that my counterparts can wrap up the final details. All right, yeah, thank yeah. you, Ron. Thank you for your wonderful presentation, and thank you, everyone, for participating today. We uh, want to remind you about the um, evaluation that you'll receive when you uh, exit the presentation. We do value your opinion and would like you to complete the evaluation. Uh, thank you again for joining us, and we um, look forward to um, our next presentation, which will be in the webinar series on June 9th. Um, it will be on the topic of on the map for emergency management. Thank you again for joining us, and thank you for your presentation, Ron. Have a good day. Thank you. This concludes today's conference. You may disconnect at this time.